Hi, I'm Jim Juback. I'm wearing my Toledo Mud Hens hat in an attempt to rally the market because God knows it needs some help. Today, in this video, I'm going to be talking about three specific hedges that you can use against this market's weakness. If you'd like more on why this market is weak and how long it might last, uh, you can go to my free site, jubackpicks.com, uh, or for even more more, uh, my subscription site, jubackam.com. We're also running a offer targeted at millennial investors, or really any investor with more time than money, which is basically young investors. Uh, the links to do all of that are all down below. Okay, today's topic. Um, let's say three hedges for a falling market. May has been a pretty um, laggy kind of month. Uh, we're not seeing a huge uh, kind of whooshy sell-off, but we're seeing continued weakness. Uh, so, for example, if we look at the NASDAQ 100, which is a concentrated uh, index of the 100 biggest uh, stocks on that NASDAQ exchange, so very heavily weighted toward Amazon, Microsoft, etc., etc. We're looking at, at in, the index is still up 4.83% uh, as of yesterday. Uh, but over the last month, it's down 5.8%. And that's pretty much a picture you get across the indexes. Tech is selling off. All, pretty much everything is selling off on a bad day. And today, uh, the 19th, is also another bad day. And I'm going to give you three specific uh, charts to look at, three specific hedges that you might use. Okay, so first one is uh, the QQ Who Trust. This is uh, an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ uh, 100. Uh, so it's very heavily weighted in text. You can see this is a huge, fabulous run, a little weakness back in March about uh, the pandemic. Then we rallied back up and now we're selling off again. Uh, the One of the problems with this um, index or part of, part of the problem with the market as a whole is you see the huge difference between here and any kind of support. Uh, so, you know, the top here was uh, 339. This was got some support here and then some support back here. Uh, is it 299? So that's a good 10% uh, drop. But then if you really want to find some support, you got to go all the way back to 275. So there's a lot of downside potential here after a great run up. The second uh, chart that I'd like to look at is for the Russell 2000. Uh, this is using an ETF called the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, IWM. Uh, again, huge, huge run up, and then a, a longer period, a longer extended period of, of uh, moving sideways um, as we consolidate this. This is a small cap index. Um, small company stocks tend to be really, really sensitive to fears about inflation and to the Fed raising interest rates um, and to anything going wrong in the domestic economy because they don't do much in the way of overseas sales. So this is your minor. These are mostly U.S. oriented stocks. And you see the weakness here uh, with nice rallies on hopes, fall back on fear. Um, so that's that one. The third one I'm going to look at today is um, the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets Index uh, ETF. And this is about emerging markets, as you'd imagine. Again, huge run up. And then we sort of top out and then we stall, which is where we are here. And now we're looking back at this. And again, the same problem that you get with the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2000, which is that there's not much support until you go way back here to December. And even then, uh, to find deep, even better support, you have to go back to October. So this is a long way to unwind. Now, what's going on in this market? The standard advice in this market, for any market, uh, in terms of playing seasonal trends, is to sell in May and go away. In other words, basically, uh, you're going to stay out of the market for the months from May until November, because the second half of it is buy on uh, the big tech conference, Electronics Association Conference, which is in November. So basically, stay out of the market from, November, from May until November. That's standard Wall Street um, advice. Now, what we're seeing here, however, is something a little different. What we're seeing is really uh, not so much a seasonal trend, but we're seeing fears about what's going on in the general economy in terms of inflation, um, in terms of interest rates. And we're set, having a period right now where uh, I would say there are like three or four big events, uh, all with potential negative downside. 
You've got a meeting of the European Central Bank at the end of May uh, where they'll do a inflation um, forecast. And the worry is, of course, that inflation will be up. You've got a June meeting of the Fed um, where, again, the worry is that the Fed will say something about uh, inflation escaping, the need to uh, cut back on bond purchases, the need to, to raise interest rates earlier than expected. Um, then in August, you've got the uh, Jackson Hole conference uh, hosted by the Kansas City Fed, uh, often used to announce big changes in uh, monetary policy. So there's some worry in, on Wall Street right now that the Fed will use the Jackson Hole conference in August to announce a shift on inflation and interest rates. And then finally, we go back into September, uh, where the thought is that maybe that's finally the meeting where the Fed says something about changing policies. So you see all of those things are worries about the stock market, that worries about interest rates and the Fed and inflation. And there's really no upside countervailing that. Uh, earnings are going to be really great, I think, in this quarter because we've got great second quarter because we've got great year to year comparisons with um, the bad second quarter of 2020. But a lot of that's priced in. People are going, well, yeah, but that's sort of the peak of earnings growth. So maybe that's what I would like to sell. You've got a lot of people sitting there going, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Let's go back to how you might hedge this. You remember we started off looking at the uh, the Invesco QQQ Trust, which tracks the Nasdaq 100. If you wanted, if you wanted to hedge this, uh, you could, of course, buy um, put options uh, against the QQQ, they tend to be expensive. And you've got the problem of, you know, gee, when is when are things going to turn? When is when when is when is down down enough? Um, so you also have the choice of buying uh, an ETF that tries to short the QQQ. And this is the pro share short QQQ uh, ticker is uh, PSQ. And one of the things I really like about this is you notice how really terrible this ETF has been because you know, this is the mirror image of the long, so that as the market's been going up, this stock is real, this ETF has really been going down. What I really like about it as a potential hedge uh, is this bottom here. Um, so I think what we're starting to see, this bottom's at 13.07 or so, say, let's say 13. Uh, we're up to about 13.76, not a huge move, but again, if you're looking to hedge, what you'd like to do is to get in when everybody is optimistic, uh, when the price of the hedge is down, uh, and we're starting to move up from here. Okay, that's that's if you wanted to hedge against technology stocks. Second thing you might want to hedge against um, is the Russell. This is the Russell short. And again, you see the same pattern, long, 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 long. And then you've got an even longer base building up down here for the pro shares short Russell 2000 uh, ticker is RWM. Again, this is a chance to buy a, a hedge at a relatively cheap price. And unlike a put option, which you could buy uh, and which I do own uh, in my volatility portfolio, the nice thing about this is that if this is going to run for a while with some ups and downs as we try to take out this high and then this high and then this high, Buying the, the ETF rather than the put option gives you more time flexibility, if you will. Okay, last thing is the EU is the EUM, which is the, which shorts the uh, emerging markets long ETF. Uh, one of the things about emerging markets is that they uh, are very sensitive to the price of the US dollar and to US interest rates. Uh, if interest rates go up and if the US dollar goes up, emerging markets tend to go down. Again, you put in a pretty decent base right here. Uh, so this hedge would be a really good place to start to hedge against these three. These are three relatively volatile inverse indexes um, because the indexes themselves are relatively volatile, especially right now where we seem to be getting a, a pretty decent sell off in technology um, where the Russell is showing a good deal of weakness um, and where emerging markets are looking at this and going, mm, not sure what's going on with the US dollar and interest rates. So these are three ways to hedge in this market and get a pretty decent uh, leverage against the market from these ETFs. Uh, so it's one way to take a little risk out of your portfolio as we wait for things to turn uh, in the fall or whenever. 
So if you want to see more, including more on why I think the market is behaving the way the market is, go to my free site, jubackpicks.com. Uh, if you want even more, more uh, extra portfolios, more analysis, more posts every day, go to my subscribe to my paid site, uh, jubackam.com. And we've got a half price offer to the subscription site. Uh, so all of that link down below. Thanks very much for watching today. And remember, like and subscribe.